the 1980s was known as the golden age of rallying, and Group B rallying pushed the limits of rallying to a whole new level. In this almost unlimited group, huge aero components, semi automatic transmissions, four wheel drive, various cutting edge technologies continue to emerge. However, on the field at the time, in terms of power selection, various manufacturers jointly chose to use a combination of small displacement and turbocharged. Was turbocharging? Why is it so common on the field? In 1903, the Wright brothers drove the Flyer 1 off the ground. Flying with them was a 12-horsepower water-cooled inline four-cylinder piston engine. The two world wars caused the rapid development of the aviation industry. In order to dodge the anti-aircraft firepower, the warplanes were flying higher and higher. In order to overcome the power loss caused by the decrease in air density at high altitudes, Boeing equipped a turbocharged engine on the B-17 bomber to increase the practical ceiling by 30% and the top speed by 14%. This device, which was born 100 years ago, was composed of an exhaust gas turbine, intake turbine, and intercooler. The exhaust turbine used the kinetic energy of the engine exhaust to rotate and transmit the power to the intake turbine through the drive shaft to compress fresh air. However, the working temperature of a racing car on the ground was much higher than that of a fighter in the air, and because the internal energy of the compressed air increased, the temperature would rise, and the oxygen content would decrease again. Therefore, the compressed air needed to be cooled by the intercooled air to complete an isothermal compression before entering the cylinder for combustion. The increase in power of the engine meant that more oxygen and fuel were required to participate in a combustion to do work at the same time. More fuel could be delivered through high-pressure fuel injectors, and more air could be delivered by turbocharging. Compared with supercharging, turbocharging has a small load on the engine, so it entered the field of competition very early. In the Canadian-American Challenge Cup of the 1973 season, Porsche introduced a turbocharged 91730 model. Compared with the predecessor 917K model, this car, nicknamed Turbo Tank, had increased its power from 530 horsepower to 1,100 horsepower without increasing its bore. The strong power allowed it to win six of the eight races in the 1973 season and was able to run a tail speed of 386 kilometers per hour on the straight. However, with the development of turbine technology, the intake pressure was getting higher and higher and the defects were gradually revealed. In the 1980s, the Peugeot 205 T16 turbocharger, which participated in the Group E rally, had reached 4.2 bar. Since its engine displacement was only 1.8 liters, and in order to achieve an intake pressure of 4.2 bar, a huge turbine was used. But the larger the turbine, the greater the inertia, so the turbo lag was very serious. Due to inertia, the turbine speed rose very slowly after stepping on the accelerator, seriously affecting the driving experience and vehicle control. In order to reduce the impact of turbo lag, a method of off-time ignition was then adopted. By letting the incompletely combusted gasoline spray enter the exhaust pipe, it burnt and expanded in the exhaust pipe to do work to drive the turbine to keep rotating at a high speed. This also meant that the exhaust system had to face continuous high temperatures, which had a great impact on durability. In addition, as the turbine pressure increased, the engine speed dropped when the throttle was decelerated, but the turbine still rotated at a high speed due to inertia, and continuously sent high-pressure gas into the cylinder, which had a great impact on the piston and cylinder block. Therefore, the designer introduced a pressure relief valve to allow high-pressure gas to exit the scroll tube when the engine speed was low. While reaching a high chamber pressure, it could also protect the engine. This pressure relief method was called an external pressure relief valve, and its unique whistle sound had also become a feature of high-performance turbo cars in the 1980s and 1990s. On this basis, the technicians also developed an internal pressure relief valve through an extra scroll tube when the vehicle was throttled and decelerated, the high-pressure gas generated by the intake turbine was introduced into the exhaust turbine to maintain the turbine speed and further reduce the hysteresis. In 2006, Porsche introduced the 911 model of the 997 generation equipped with variable turbine technology, which controlled the airflow velocity by adding a circle of the deflector in the volume. When the speed was low, the airflow was accelerated. When the speed was high, the motor controlled the deflector to reduce the airflow speed so that the turbine could maintain a specific speed range as much as possible. As a classic case of racing technology for civilian use, although turbocharging has some inherent flaws, it has been continuously improved to increase engine power and efficiency without changing the displacement. It has a wide range of applications in both consumer and civilian fields. That's all for today's episode. If you want to learn more about the technology of racing cars, let us know in the comments section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.